Hi Grinder School, this is U-Boat and I am once again starting to make videos again. Um, I've been off playing poker or even making poker videos for probably close to a year and uh, you know, I've been pretty busy with my family and my business. It's been very difficult to play uh, any forms of poker uh, whether online or live. So I took a year off and now, uh, starting about a month ago, I started to have some more free time and I started to think about uh, getting back, um, hitting the tables again. But at the same time, I didn't want to rush through getting back to the game. So I was kind of thinking about, you know, what's the best way to kind of ease into the game? And that's what I want to talk about right now because whether you take now, I think if you take one or two days off, I don't think it's, it's any problem. But when you start taking, say, two weeks off, a month off, a few months off, or like myself, a year off, um, I don't think you should kind of rush back into the game because uh, chance of making error is very high. And what you want to do is you want to kind of slowly ease into the game. So about two or three weeks ago, what I started to do was, well, what, think about what's the best way to get back um, to hitting the tables. And I didn't want to open up the tables right away. So what I started to do was uh, kind of think about poker a little more often, which will lead to our second page. So we want to ease into the game. And like I said, we never want to rush into the game after a long break because... I mean, you may think that you still know because um, all the experience that you had in the past, but you know you can never trust yourself. You can never trust your memory, and I definitely can't trust my memory. And I don't want to make a lot of mistake donking off stack after stack to my opponents. So I start to think about, you know, pot limit Omaha. And you know the best thing to think about is probably the starting hands. I start to think about you know what the premium hands are and you know what makes a good hand in Pot Limit Omaha. Just thinking about it in my head. I wasn't really writing it down, like you know whether in the morning, say like while I'm having coffee, I would just think about some of the hands that I would play in different positions, whether it's button cut off, middle position under the gun, or in the blinds. And, you know, you always want to get into a rhythm of playing poker. And when you do play poker, for me, and I'm sure for most people who play poker, it becomes an obsession. You uh, think about it too much, and you kind of talk about it too much, whether other people want to hear it or not. But right now, um, I really don't have too many people to talk with in regards to poker. So what I started to do was I started to watch some poker videos. Uh, maybe some of uh, Mr. Padawan's videos and some of uh, CF The Natural. And I also start to watch, you know, almost any forms of poker on YouTube. You know, it could be uh, WSOP, WBPT. Uh, one of my favorite is, uh, what is it, Poker After Dark. I watched, I must watch almost all the episodes, but I re-watched uh, the PLO Cash Game, which was really fun to watch. And it's not to learn strategy, because I don't think the strategy that the high stakes player use is applicable to my game. Uh, but I just want to you know, just get into rhythm, just the flow of thinking about poker and thinking about how I'll start playing the game once I start. And I think, you know, not touching the table is good. So maybe one or two weeks before you start hitting the table, just start to think about it. Um, watch some videos, watch some poker TV, or read some poker books. You know, there's some great books out there. Like, I think uh, characters have his new book out. I think that would be a good read, whether you play No Limit, Omaha or any forms of poker. I mean, the fundamentals is the same, right? You know, you bet for value or you bet to bluff. And, uh, you know, it's one of the two, it comes down to one of those two choices. 
And then uh, as the day got closer to today, um, say maybe a few days ago, like today is Thursday, uh, it was around Monday or Tuesday, I started to kind of like began to visualize how I would play poker, how I would visualize, you know, my setup. Um, I we, we moved recently, so I thought the quietest room is my son's room. He's got a nice little desk, and it's very quiet, and it has a window, so I have the view of the outside, and I got quite a bit of natural light coming in, which is really good for my emotions, especially, you know, if you're the one that types that tend to tilt. Um, I think having bright light is good, gets you in a good mood. Um, the table settings, so for example, for me, all I have is I just clear everything on the table, and all I have is my Mac, uh, MacBook, my laptop, and, you know, I visualize that. I visualize, you know, how my setup would be, and I visualize, you know, opening my laptop, turning it on, and, uh, opening up uh, poker stars and uh, searching the lobby for good tables. And again, I would always think about the starting hands. Uh, that's something that I've been thinking about quite a bit because um, in my regular game, um, before I took this big layoff, um, I would be pretty, I mean, I play very super tight um, in early position. But as it got to the cutoff and button, I would be very, almost extremely loose at times. Um, so what I wanted to do was tighten up on the button a little bit because I knew, I know that you know once I start playing my game, um, if I start playing loose again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be playing a lot of marginal hands in very difficult situations. So what I want to do is I want to put myself in a position where. Um, just strength is my advantage uh, against my opponents. So, you know, that's a key thing. And that's why I've been thinking about starting hands uh, quite a bit. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, as it got closer and closer, um, like starting hands or playing post-flop, uh, I'll start to watch more videos. And like yourself, um, there's a lot of great videos in grand school whether you're playing No Limit or Parliament Omaha, or uh, just even listening to podcasts, you know, Grinder School podcasts or PokerCast. I mean, it doesn't have to be all about strategy. It's listening to, you know, what's going on in the poker world because over the last year, I have no idea what happened. I don't know who won the WSOP. Um, I used to be always up to date about that by listening to um, a lot of poker casts and a lot of poker news and reading up on poker news but now I have no idea um, who the top players are or what's even going on my um, poker site like for example like uh, uh, when did they get rid of the uh, what is it your VPP and FPP points it's like some kind of coin so I gotta read more on that on poker sites to figure out you know what's that all about and uh, what is it, yesterday when I, I mean, I had to reinstall everything. I bought a new laptop. So uh, when I was re reinstalling my poker tracker, um, I mean, it was a good news because I just realized that uh, poker tracker now provides a HUD for Zoom for the Mac, which, uh, you know, almost a year ago, we didn't have that. So uh, when I read... Uh, some of the poker tracker forum it stated that uh, I guess it was late last year where they started to provide Zoom HUD for the MacBook or any forms of the Mac, which is awesome because um, that kind of that will definitely change my approach of the games that I will be playing. I mean, I always loved Zoom, but due to the lack of um, the HUD, I focus more on the six max games, which is good. I mean. Um, you can definitely play against players because you do get to label the players a lot better. However, the thing about the Zoom is um, I love the speed. Uh, it's definitely an adrenaline rush. And it's kind of amazing how many hands that you can accumulate over a very short period of time. Even if you just play one or two tables, it's just incredible. Like over... A period of hour and a half, you can accumulate, say, as much as 300 hands playing two tables. 
And I guess it also depends on, you know, how fast you make your fold. Like sometimes I'll just watch other people play. So getting back to preparing for poker, I think it's a very good idea watching many forms of media about poker. And it doesn't have to be about Omaha. It could be any forms of poker. And another really important thing is um, if you are, you know, just starting poker again or if you take a long layoff like myself, I think it's a very good idea to start getting into a good habit, not only for poker but for your life. Like uh, I find that, you know, when I run in the morning or when I run in between sessions, it clears my head because sometimes, you know, when you're grinding for two, three hours, for me the limit is usually two hours. Like up to two hours I'm quite fine with uh, my focus on the game, but after two hours, say it reaches three hours, my mind starts to wander, and it's I find it very difficult to just focus right on right on my game. So um, when that happens to you, or when that happens to me, I find that I, you know going for a short run it can be short as ten minutes or as long as. 30 to 40 minutes helps me clear my head up and I get back home, I take a shower and have a, you know, a small meal. I find that it really helps uh, revitalize my brain so that I can have another session of uh, poker. And I truly believe that it can help you and it can help anyone. And when you do need to take a break, um, you know, it doesn't have to be running. Uh, if you're not used to running, you know, go for a walk. You know, go for like a 10, 15, 20 minute walk. And you'll think about the game. And it just clears your head. It keeps your mind off anything stressful. And after you come back, you'll feel really good. I mean, you know, it's proven that you know, after you exercise, you know, it does, your body does release a lot of endorphin. And that's going to help you focus and feel good. So, you know, you can lift weights too. And I find that stretching is really good. Say you stretch for 5 to 10 minutes. Or if you're into yoga, um, I recently tried hot yoga lately and it really kicked my ass. I thought it would be very easy, but an uh, hour and a half of hot yoga is probably one of the most excruciating physical thing I've ever done in my life. So uh, you know, something to take note of. Just do anything physical. Even go for a bike ride, go for a swim, do some push-ups, you know. But remember, it's just do it all in moderation because you don't want to be so tired that you know, you're going to be totally sore and you won't be able to do anything the next day. And I think uh, you know, before a session of poker, I think it's really important to eat very small meals, not, and not, nothing big. Because if you eat something big, what's going to happen to you is you're going to feel tired. I mean, I always feel tired after a big meal, especially after like eating sp spaghetti or a pasta. Um, I find that if I eat, you know, say a small steak, you know, a piece of chicken with a lot of veg veggies, I find that that keeps me fairly alert. It doesn't make me feel as tired as eating, say, pasta or a big sandwich. And I think one of the most important thing, and probably the most underestimated thing, is staying hydrated. I mean, if you are dehydrated, you're not going to be able to focus at all. I mean. I think our body's composed of 80% water, so staying hydrated is probably one of the best things you can do for you. But you know, you don't want to drink so much that you have to go to the, you have to take a leak every 20, 30 minutes. Um, and then when you are, you know, about to start a session, like always keep in mind about knowing your limits. Like for me, I know that I will not go past two hours because even if the game is good, even if the luck is going my way, I make just horrible mistakes. Well, not horrible mistakes, but I make some mistakes that I do regret. I make some bad calls and I start playing just a little bit too loose um, on the button and the cutoff and also from the big blind too when I'm heads up against the small blind. So uh, always know your limits. and. <clears throat> know and understand you know try to understand how your body and your mind functions um some people they think they can grind six hours straight and i don't think anyone can really keep 100 percent focused for six hours um, i'm sure there are some people who are able to do that but i think most of us normal humans 
I want it capable of staying focused between say one to three hours. I, don't, I think anything beyond that is just too much. You do have to take a break and that leads to planning your breaks. So for me, like I said, every hour and a half to two hours, I'm going to take a break. It could be 10 minutes, it could be an hour, it could be, you know, a couple of hours. You want to take long enough breaks so that you feel refreshed. You don't want to feel tired and you don't want poker to be a chore. After all, poker is a game and we're playing it because we enjoy it and it's fun. And when that goes away, it becomes a chore. It becomes like a job that you don't want to do. So take these breaks and I think it'll help you feel good about poker, good about your game, and you won't feel miserable about grinding a few hours of poker. And I know we use the word terminology of uh, grind a lot, but you know, instead of grind, call it playing. Because after all, it is a game, right? We're playing poker. We're playing a game. So enjoy it and have fun. And I think the next point is really important. You must eliminate distractions. I mean, if you're in it just for entertainment, I guess it's okay. But if you're a Grinder School member, if you paid money to join any website, and if you paid money for your data tracker like Poker Tracker or HEM, it means that you're taking this game fairly seriously. And if you're going to take this game seriously, you got to get rid of any distractions. And right now in 2016, there are so many distractions. We got our phone, we have our tablets like our iPad, we have our TV, we have the internet. There's so many distractions in our life. So what you want to do is first maybe find the time. Um, if you're single, it'd be great. Like you can use any part of the day to play poker. But if you have family, if you have kids, just find a time where you know you can be by yourself, where your house is nice and quiet, whether it's early in the morning or when kids are at school or late at night. And get in the habit of playing at the same place every day, whether it's a small part of your house, a room, a small, your favorite seat. Just get in the habit of playing at the same place and get rid of any distractions, which means if you have your TV on, turn it off. Your phone, put it on silent mode, put it on airplane mode. If you have a tablet, turn it off. And, you have, and if you have any other browsers um, opened up, close it. The only thing that you should have open when you play poker is your poker site and your poker tracker or any poker calculator that you may need during the game. Because, you know, we, we always hear about the word multitasking. Everyone says that, oh, I got to multitask. But in actuality, I don't think anyone's really truly able to multitask. I think I read on, uh, there was some kind of uh, New England of medicine. And also, I think it was like Psychology Today where I read a while ago that there was a lot of research done on multitasking and it found that most people are, well, most people cannot multitask. So if you have all those distractions, if you're watching a movie while playing poker, you know, don't do it. Just get, do yourself a favor. Turn it off. Just focus on your game. And even music. Um, I know sometimes music, you might find that music might help, but it is a distraction. I mean, if it's at a very low volume, um, I think it might be okay. But, you know, if you don't have to, just focus on your game. Because you want to think about poker when you're playing the game. You want to stay focused. You want to think about your starting hands. You want to think about your opponents. You want to think about all the equity, your pot odds, your combos, your outs. How are you going to think about all that with, all, with any distractions around you? So when you do sit down for a session, get rid of your distraction because you know what? Don't fool yourself. You cannot multitask. I know those members who are younger, who are probably like under, I don't know, 35, 30, especially if you're in your 20s and or even if you're in your teens, you may think you can multitask, but you know what? You can't. It's just, you know, it's just old guy's opinion, okay? So now, once you're in the game, um, I think 
what's really important is, especially after a long layoff like me, or if it's even a month, keep your sessions short. Like I told you that my normal sessions was normally around, you know, two hours. But um, I played earlier today in the morning, and I kept it very short. Like maybe, I think I played 45 minutes, 60 minutes. And I took a break, and I played another 45 minutes, 60 minutes. You want to keep it short because um, you want to kind of think about how you played. You know, like ask yourself some questions like, did I play premium, premium starting hands? Um, did I play, did I evaluate my opponents correctly? You know, and also another really important thing is don't play at your normal stake. Like for me, I played at the lowest stake possible. I'm, I started at 2 PLO. Well, why do I start up 2 PLO? Because I just want to get into the rhythm. I know the money's not big, but it's not about the money right now. We are trying to get back into our game, get back into our normal rhythm. And another thing is, um, you know, if you did take a long time off and you're thinking about re you know, starting to play poker again, and say you always thought about playing, say, Omaha, or maybe Omaha High Low, or Stud, Stud 7, I guess, or Chinese Open, open Chinese Poker, Open Face Chinese Poker. Um, this is actually a really good time to just start a new game. So if you've been playing No Limit for, say, last 10 years, and you always wanted to start a new game, what better time than after a long layoff? So that, you know, all those bad habits that you had previously, I mean, it may not be there anymore. And this may be a good time to, you know, learn a new game or relearn your game again. So, you know, even if it's no limit and you used to have these bad habits of, say, calling too many three bets and uh, maybe opening too loose on early position, I mean, it's a good time to, you know, fix those mistakes, fix those uh, problems, and improve your game. And just start getting these good habits into your game. You know, just get into the habit of playing well. Okay. And another thing is, after these layoffs, um, try to avoid goals that you cannot keep. Um, I think a good example is, like, I hear a lot of people say, oh, this month um, I'm going to play 50,000 hands. And I'm going to play something like six to eight hours every day. Um, I think for most people who have a job or are in school, I think it's almost an unreasonable goal. Unless you are a professional poker player, online poker player, I think then, and even then, I mean, you do have to gradually build up. But I think having an unreasonable goal is not good for your game and also for your mental game also is you'll be more prone to tilt and you'll become frustrated and you are going to give up the game pretty fast or if you don't give up you're going to lose your bankroll so please avoid any goals that you cannot keep keep your goals it may you don't really have to have a goal right now because you remember all you're trying to do is just get back into the game if you do want to set goals have some reasonable goal like playing maybe an hour maybe every second day you know don't tell yourself i'm gonna play 1000 hands i think that's very unreasonable um i think a time limit is more reasonable than volume like you can say okay i'm gonna play an hour but it can be plus or minus say 10 15 minutes right you can play 45 minutes you go oh, okay well you played your um daily goal of uh, almost an hour and the, because you remember you want to keep relaxed um, another one thing that you want to start doing is the reason why you want to ease into the game and you the reason why you want to play relax is you want to con start controlling your emotions if you are one of those people who are very prone to tilt while you're playing this is a very good time to again um, develop good habits um, just play well Play relaxed. If you get stacked, just go, oh, well, you know, I got stacked. You know, I got my stacks in when I was ahead, so there's no reason to tilt. You're playing correctly, so stay relaxed. Avoid tilt. And by doing this, you will slowly get into your rhythm and a routine. And that's what we're trying to do. 
you know, we're trying to build good habits, good routines, you know, avoiding distractions, avoiding tilt, like keeping hydrated, knowing when to take a break. You know, we have to, you know, if you kind of get in the habit of doing that, it becomes habit and it becomes second nature when you play poker. And remember, you know, you took a month off or two months off or a year off. And for me, I'm not going to grind 10K in a couple of days, okay? It won't, it won't allow me to play my best by playing that much volume. Like, I'll be happy if I can play, say, 1,000 hands this week, okay? Because, um, it'll probably be a little bit more because I'm switching. I'll be primarily focused on Zoom PLO. But, you know, I mean, right now, I don't really have any big goals, you know. I just want to start playing consistently. That's my goals right now. Um, I don't have those lofty goals right now. Um, I just want to play consistently. Whether it's one hour a day or two hours a day, I just want to start playing consistently and start studying my game. So again, don't think about the number of hands or even hours. I think, you know, the time frame is a lot better than counting your hands. And again, I emphasize that keep your sessions very short with many breaks after a long time off the tables, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to gradually build it. So for me, like right now, I'm playing, say, 45 to 60 minutes for one session. And after I feel comfortable with this, and in my brain, it feels that I'm already comfortable, but you never know. You always want to ease into everything. Like, for example, like if I took a year off running, I'm not going to run 10K right away. I'll probably ease in with, say, say running, say, maybe three kilometers, four kilometers, and over weeks build up to 10K. And the same as poker. Right now, I'm going to play, say, 45 to 60 minutes. And then maybe after a week or two, maybe probably two weeks, I'll probably try, like, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. And I'm not going to push it. And then after I feel good about playing hour and 15 minutes, making sure that I'm able to stay focused and I can keep my emotions in line, I'll probably go to like hour and a half and then towards two hours. For, you know, for me, if I can reach hour and a half to two hours, I'll be pretty happy about um, length of my game. Because, you know, if I do want to play more, I'm going to take a long break. Say I'll play for two hours and I'll take, sometimes I might take 30 minute break. But most times, I'll take maybe half a day break and then come back in the evening and play again. So again, this is probably, if you're like me, if you're in the same position as I am, it's a good time to, good, to build good habits. And that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I do have some bad habits of just turning on the laptop and playing. But I, for me, that's what I want to do. I want to kind of prepare myself, visualize how I'm going to play, and just get everything in order, everything organized, so that when I once I start playing my game, um, there's no distraction. I can focus 100% on poker. And again, uh, it's a great time to relearn and improve our fundamentals. Um, no matter how good you are, you know, everyone can improve their fundamentals, make it sound, and make it better, so that when you're in those awkward, difficult situation, you'll, you know, your probability of making the right move is a lot more higher than, uh, say, a year ago. And again, we want to focus on the game, not volume. And <clears throat> by not focusing on volume, we want to avoid mass tabling, even multi-tabling. Um, I think multi-tabling is another form of distraction. Now, when you're playing one table, two player, two tables, you're able to really focus on your game and your hands and putting your opponents on the range. However, when you start playing, say, five, six tables, especially after a long layoff, um, you know, it's distracting. You're not going to be able to focus because remember, our main objective is to focus on our game. I mean, unless you're a professional and you've been doing this for, say, 5, 10 years of mass tabling, say, I don't know, 20 tables, like Nano Noko or some of our other poker pro pros here at uh, Grinder School, um, unless you're one of them and unless you have that much experience and unless you are a winning player and you can win mass tabling 10-plus tables, avoid 
mass tabling because if you're just a a micro small stakes grinder and you're breaking even um, it just proves that you know you suck I suck if I multi table I'm gonna be honest I'm not a once I start getting on my six seven table I suck I suck so bad it's just awful and and for me, like I noticed when I cut back to say four tables, you know, in regular ring games, that's when I start to play optimally. I mean, like, I think two to four tables is pretty good for playing Omaha because, you know, we are dealt four hands. Maybe if you're playing no limit, you can play slightly more, but I think two to four tables optimum, whether it's Omaha or no limit. But at the same time, it depends on your experience and it depends whether you're a winning player or not. If you're a kick-ass winning player, having 10 BB per 100 ads, oh, pff, go for it. But if you're like barely break-even, barely winning, like 2 BB over 100 ads, um, you know, rake's going to kill you. So, you know, don't, don't learn to suck at poker. Learn to be better at poker. And, you know, you can't, emulate these pros who play so many tables because you know you don't have that experience you first you got to become a winning player playing two to four tables and if you can't do that you can't play multi-tabling and because i've seen i had us i had this one student uh two years ago and you know for me i, find, I think multi-tabling parliament is very difficult he was trying to multi-table um eight tables at once and he sucked um, but once he cut back to one to two tables he was a winning player but uh, you know, he just had a bad habit of adding table after table so please keep your volume low <coughs> and avoid mass tabling and probably the and probably one of the most important habit to um, instill in your game is to study right after your session so after your one or two hour session well in the beginning for me it would be like my 45 or 60 minutes um, I'm going to go over my hand history and first I'm going to look at the most obvious ones I'm not going to look at my hands that I won I'm going to look at the biggest stacks that I lost probably the top 10 and I'm going to make sure that when I did put my stacks in I want to make sure that I was in good against my opponents. If I lost a stack, but I was in good, I was ahead of my opponents, fine. If I was in bad, well, I, I need to kind of think about my game again and just make sure that I don't make that mistake. However, if I was in that marginal place, I mean, that's where you really have to study and, and that's where you have to get out your, you know, uh, pro poker tools, get your calculator out, do some math, do some, count some outs. Go over the wraps, you know, that's what you want to do. Because studying will pay probably your most dividends, um, especially after right after you play poker, your session. And another thing is like there's that question of well, how much should I study and how much should I play? Um if you are new to Parliament Omaha, I think kind of like almost like 50-50 is pretty good. So you, if you play an hour, you study for an hour. But you know, once you start moving up stakes, say you're a winning player through one, five, ten PLO, and you're moving up to twenty-five PLO, you know, then maybe you should be playing eighty percent, studying twenty percent. But I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with say studying say forty forty percent and playing sixty percent. But you know, you do want experience. Experience is everything, and that's where you make mistakes, and you got to learn from your mistakes. Because when you find the errors within your game, and you're able to correct it, and you can correct it in game, that's when you start to improve. So, please, like, if you don't have Poker Tracker or Ham, try to get some. I'm sure there's some free form of uh, data tracker for your game. Where you can go through your hands because I think that's probably one of the most important, most probably the most effective thing that you can do to go over first the top ten losses and then go over some of the marginal spots. And if you have trouble, um, say you don't know what your mistake is, 
that's when you should start posting it on um, the forums, the cash game forums, the cash game histories, uh, with, especially here at Grind School. Or if you even have trouble understanding that, if you keep, make, keep making the same mistake over and over again, hire someone, hire a coach, hire CFT, or hire, if you're playing No Limit, hire characters and some of the other instructors here at Grind School. Um, because you know you're here to learn, you're here to improve. Whether your future goal is to be a pro or not, or you just want to make side income like me. I mean, like for me, I never. It's nice to have this side income. You know, whether it's a couple of hundred or a thousand dollars a month, like it's a really nice, fun way to get some part-time income. So, I think another important thing is like you know. Most of us poker players are obsessive about our game. And when we stop playing poker, say with our friends and we're with our family, we start talking about poker a little bit too much. The thing is, people who don't play poker have like absolutely no interest in the game. And, they, and even if you try to explain to the people about poker, they think it's all about gambling. And they ask some annoying questions about poker, like, you know, how much money did you win today? You know, stuff like that, which is, you know, it's like over the long run, right? So, so what I would recommend is, you know, once you, once you finish your session and once you studied your hand histories, you try to keep your mind off it. I think it's actually mentally very good for your game to keep your mind off poker when you're not playing poker. You know, enjoy your time with friends and family. You know, go play sports, go play soccer, go play hockey, go run. Um, don't be afraid to take breaks. Um, you know, I remember when I first uh, joined Grind School, I would, on my free time, all I would be watching is videos, going over hand histories, and watching poker on TV again. I was driving my wife probably crazy. Um... And, you know, when I tried to get a conversation going about poker with my friends who are not interested in poker, uh, you know, it just went nowhere. <laughs> so, you know, don't be that kind of guy where, you know, the only interest that you have is poker. You know, you have other interests. You got school. You got your life. Um, just, you know, take your mind off the game. I think it would be good. And the most important thing to realize is, remember, poker is just a game. So have fun. And don't... Don't let poker dictate your life. Make sure your life dictates poker. So only set aside a certain amount of time for poker, and that's it. So this is the beginning of my new poker series. It's PLO, Pot Limit Omaha, Reboot. It's Reboot because I'm restarting my game again. And this was a lecture. And on my next video, I'll be going over some not starting hands, it's kind of like, remember, starting hands is going to be very subjective, so we'll kind of go over certain starting hands, what I think is good and bad, but, you know, you may have your own opinion. And whether it's this video or any other videos that I'm going to make, if you have some comments or if you disagree with something or if you agree with something, please leave a comment. Don't be afraid to leave comments. That's what we want. We want the interaction with you, our members, because you're paying for paying money for Grind the School, and we want you to interact with us, okay? And all the other Grind the School instructors, they're awesome. I mean, I remember when I first joined, oh my God, the interaction that I had with the instructors and the other members and the senior members were incredible, and that's what got me really into poker and into improving the game and being accountable to how I play and you know, being accountable to my mistakes. So... Be like that. Get interact with us. You know, get involved with this site. Post your hand histories. Okay. So thank you very much for listening, and I'll talk to you again next time.